And welcome into Dustin Details. Break Bill Dust Details with Dustin, and uh, we have a special guest on the line this afternoon, former WNBA star Ruthie Bolton. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon, Ruthie. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, first of all, before we get into talk about what we're going to talk about that's happening this weekend in Stockton, um, I want to get your recap of uh, last night's Game 3 in Cleveland. Who, who, who are you picking for this series, the Warriors or the Cavs? I was on the edge of my seat watching this game. I was just like, oh, but now, of course, I'm pulling for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my goodness, what an excitement. And as as uh, Durant was coming down, I was like, no, no, don't, 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 don't shoot. Oh, good shot, you know. <laughs> because sometimes I think the Warriors, I love them to death and the big band, but sometimes they they shoot themselves in the game and they're out of the game, you know, because they, they, mm -hmm. you know, they got a lot of great shooters. And, but, um Anyway, it, it was just, it was amazing. I could one of my friends, like, just calm down. Like, They're they going to be okay. But, yeah, it was a beautiful, it was, to me, that that was a championship game right there. Yeah, and uh, something about this series, it's the trilogy, as everybody knows. But the, also, it's a great, it's great to, well, it's a star-studding field of rosters. And um, I want to get your take real quick on Kevin Durant. A lot of people are very, very intrigued by the, well, basically this year, him going from the team that beat him in the Western Conference Finals to going to the team that was in the Finals last year. What, what do you think of Kevin Durant going to Golden State? I think people giving him a You know, he's, he knows where the champion is. It's mm -hmm. like, if, if you want to play the best, if you want to be the best, you got to play. Okay, yeah, he saw uh, that team is on the rise, and he can have a lot of respect for him, so... It make him to me. It make him smart. It make him wise. Why not? Mm -hmm. A team that beat us, yeah, you know, they they got it going on. So I think it was a great move. I, you know, it, to me, people just you know, envious and people that are, are, are saying negative things about it are not Warriors fan. They envious because now they got a powerhouse. So I think it's a great move. I've always liked Durant, even when he was in Oklahoma. He's a great guy. I, I see a little bit more toughness in him because I always thought that he might have played a little too passive. A little too soft, but now he come what he's putting on a whole new persona, like a whole different mindset. He's he's more aggressive. Mm -hmm. He play with a chip on his shoulder now, and I, I love the new Durant. Yeah, and Kevin Durant, it's basically him back where we saw a couple of years ago. Everybody said it's either him or LeBron James are the best two basketball players in the world, and now he's uh, living up to it in this series. Let's go to uh, your career, basically. You spent eight years as Sacramento Monarch, and uh, you you stayed in Sacramento after you retired. What made you fall in love with this city and the region of Northern California? Uh, you know, I, it's funny we were just talking about this. I've been here 20 years. Mm-hmm. And when I was allocated here after the Olympics, I was not happy because I didn't want to come to California because I'm a Mississippi girl. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I was going to a big city with all the bright lights and fast cars. And once I got here, I, I just, to me, the place just grew on me. It just grew on me. And, and I, I think it, it is, I've been here for 20 years and I love the community. Uh, I love the atmosphere. I love the diversity in the community. And the, the fans are just awesome. You know, they, they, they're going to stick with you whether you win or lose it. And, and I, 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 we've, we've had some amazing fans with the Monarchs. And mm -hmm. I'm very, very thankful to uh, have uh, spent my uh, career here. What is it about a Sacramento sports fan? They're very diehard. They're very loyal. We saw that a couple years ago with the Kings before they moved. That Basically, that's the reason the Kings stayed is the fan movement. What do you think about Sacramento as a city that basically loves basketball and loves their team to root for? Well, you know, Sacramento is not a big city. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of things happening here. Uh, we don't have um, a lot of things, for example, that L.A. may have or the Bay Area may have. So it really, you look forward to it. It's like you, the Kings fans, I got people with diehard Kings fans because it's like you're going to either have to let that be your entertainment or you're just going to have a, uh, you know, uh, there won't be anything. So I think it's just uh, the loyalty of the fans. It's like, you know what, where we know – you know, we have to support them even in the bad times, even when they're struggling. We have to still be fans. So, I think that that's part of it, and where we have to sort of go with what we have. We don't, we don't have a uh, four or five different, you know, professional teams here. So we have to sort of go with what we have. I think that's the mentality of the fans, and then they just, and it's a small town too. It's mm -hmm. a small community, and so there's a lot of support here. And and I, I just to me, I really 
I've grown here, and you know, I, the fans. I had an event Tuesday night. They showed my documentary, and the fans came out, supported it. It was just a beautiful, a beautiful night, and they are very, very loyal. Even people are not from here. They said, "Man, come to Sacramento, man. Y'all fans are loud and wild, and man, they love y'all. They think, they think Jesus bleed uh, our our uh, color, you know, purple and stuff. So, but uh, but I just, I, I just think it's a great community and a great fan base, and and really like family." Yeah, and it, it speaks to this region, I think, that there are diehard sports and basketball fans that no matter what will show up and support um, anything you'll do of your, your one, as you're a player, you do off the court stuff. Players will show, uh, fans will show up for what you do after your career. I know they do that with Kenny Thomas's restaurant, Sacramento, and other places, uh, the Kings, uh, and other uh, players around the region. So if you stay loyal to Sacramento, they'll stay loyal to you. Um, I want to ask you about the Olympics, though. You're a two time gold medal winning Olympian. Um, what was your greatest memory of winning those medals in 96 and, uh, of course, 2000? 96 being in Atlanta and 2000 being in Sydney? You know, the, the, it was just so many memories. Mm-hmm. You know, the journey, the journey was amazing. You know, playing with some of the world's best athletes, obviously. Mm-hmm. And everything about it I loved. When I see my teammates, I saw them last summer at a reunion and they were just like girl and i was talking about playing i play in three on three shit they was like man you were just so they they tell me i have to get counseling to, to totally completely walk away from basketball i love it i love competing i love the competition i love uh, everything about it and it's just a, you know that's been the, the driving force that's been like my you know uh my foundation in sports and it really just have um given me an amazing platform and, and it taught me so much about myself and about life. And, and I'm just thankful to have been a legend in the game. And to me now, it's about giving back and, and using that. And I, you know, I say, what are these gold medals for? What are these Hall of Fame for if I'm not really empowering someone in life? If I'm not making someone, mm-hmm. helping making someone better or making someone smile or encouraging someone. So I try to use my basketball experience to really transfer into real life. You know, I have an aim high program. I've written two books. I have a 30 for 30 on my life story. So I want to use my platform and everything that I've done in sports to really leverage an opportunity to really empower, impact, and create change in the community. Uh, the Mighty Ruthie Bolton is joining us on Details with Dustin, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, a two-time WNBA All-Star, Sacramento, uh, Sacramento Monarchs great. Um so, besides the Olympic Games, what was your most favorite moment in uh, your basketball career? Uh, well, you know, I think we played a gold medal game. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, we played the Brazilian team, and, and it was so much at stake in that game. You know, we were 59-0, and 0, and we were playing a team that had beat prior. And so we, we had our work cut out for us, but I was so hungry. The coach told me that, you know, you know, she asked me, what do you think the key to us winning tomorrow night? You know, I said, we got to play hard. We got to play hungry. We got to, you know, play with tenacity. We got, she said, yeah, all those things are great, but she said, you have to play one of the best games of your life. You know, that point girl with name Paula, she said, you got to get on her. You got to get so close in her grill that she go to the bathroom, you go with her. You know? And she, if you can, t- you know, you got to get so close that you can tell with two-faced, you use a brush. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, coach, I got you. Okay, I got this. So, to have that challenge, this lady was averaging about 28 points a game. Mm-hmm. When I got done with it, she only had three. Wow. And I was so dedicated to the call. I was so focused. And I wanted to do this not just for me, but for my teammates and for, for the country. Yeah. And so, those memories would go forever. And when I speak, I have a poster board of me tugging the ball away, pulling the ball away from two Brazilians. And I have this aggro, I have this, uh, this look on my face of just, just the aggression. It's a, I have this look of just, it's a crazy look. And the thing about it is that I generally ask the kids, I said, what do you think, what do you see in that picture? Oh, I see toughness, determination, strength, fight. You know, I say, yes, those things are great. I said, but you know what you see? You see a woman, you see a woman with a ball we're trying to take the ball away. With mm-hmm. two minutes in the game, we up by 25. But you see someone that didn't want to take the possession off, someone that was not going to be satisfied until the buzzer went off. I wanted it all. I didn't want them to have nothing. And that ball, I even wanted that ball in that possession. 
And so it, it is that, that moment, that experience, and I know without a doubt, you know, changed my life forever because of my mindset and the ability to just not be satisfied, the ability to be hungry and to just want more. And I wanted it, and I wanted more for, you know, for our country. So that, that memory go with me all the time and people ask me a lot about that. Mm-hmm. And I show that picture and give me an opportunity to relive that over and over again. You're a author of a new book coming out. You already have one book uh, out also called Power to, uh, Pain to Power is coming out soon. Uh, tell people about this book and uh, what should they expect when they open it and uh, when it comes out. Uh, the book we're hoping to, uh, we, we are taking pre-orders now mm-hmm. through and we, uh, The book will be out uh, the middle of July, uh, right around my 50th birthday celebration. Uh, but for Pain to Power from just just the experience I've went through and all the pain I've experienced through basketball and through the domestic violence and but how I've been able to turn it inside out and to make my opposition become an opportunity. And I really feel led to really share that with everybody that I meet, especially women. And I want to empower them. I don't want people going around mm-hmm. with power. I don't want your power to to become if you go through something, your pain, I don't want your pain to, you have to relive it over and over. So I'm hoping that my formula of success, my formula of turning pain to power will resonate with people, understand about how they have to create purpose in their life, how they have to learn how to go through their process and trust their process and then how it's going to give them peace. And after the peace, they're going to be empowered. So I just want this book to resonate. I want it to be a keepsake. There's going to be some questions asked through it in the, book, in the book about where they are, about where they're trying to go. And I really want this to really help heal, help heal so many people, so many families, so many women, so that they can begin to live and soar and spread their wings and become what they were designed to become. The mighty Ruthie Bolton joins us on Details with Dustin, uh, two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time WNBA All-Star Sacramento Monarchs great. Uh, Ruthie, uh, if people don't know about your story, you're, you are a survivor of domestic violence, as you said in this upcoming book that's coming out. But you also had a documentary come out late last year on the SEC Network and on ESPN's 30 for 30. And you, got, you just had a screening at the Golden One Center the other night. Um, tell people about this documentary and... Uh, what was it like going through this process of uh, putting your story out there? You know, it was tough at first. You know, it's been years since the domestic mm-hmm. violence. But when they asked me to speak at a summit a couple of years ago, I was like, sure, no problem. And I didn't realize how painful it was mm-hmm. to tell the story because I hadn't healed. I had gone through my process, right? I had, I had uh, you know. Ruthie? I think we, uh, So all the time when they call me Mighty Ruthie, mm-hmm. looking through the basketball stuff, I'm hoping that after they're done watching this film, that the name still resonates. That you know what? Yes, you are mighty. You are mighty in power. You are mighty in strength. You are still a role model. You are still beloved. And that's what I hope people, when they're done watching this, that they can say, you know what? I know I've learned the gift of forgiveness. I've learned how to give myself and give others. I can live again. I can be in power because other people gonna learn through my life. They're gonna learn through my example. And they're gonna learn through my pain. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna learn through my struggle. So that's what I hope that that uh, that the audience get through watching the documentary. As I mentioned, the documentary was on the SEC channel and if people don't know, you went to Auburn University. So how does this Mississippi girl end up in Auburn? 
Well, I ended up at Auburn because my sister was there, mm -hmm. and really no other schools wanted me. No other schools wanted me, and so I, I was left with only the school to go to at Auburn, but the only way I could play there is that I had to ride a bus for eight hours. And wow. And coach, coach said I wouldn't play in my senior year because I wasn't good as my sister, and, and dealing with that pain, that was a lot of pain. That mm -hmm. was a lot of rejection, and, and so I had to really fight through that, battle through that, and the, and the interesting thing about that is that because I, I, I fought and I persevered and I didn't know that I, I didn't quit and I and I got great results. So in my personal life, when I started to deal with domestic violence and people were telling me to leave, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to quit. I'm like, how you, dare you tell me to walk away from something? I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to quit. I don't know if victory is leaving the stand, but I don't know how to quit. I'm not, walk, I'm not walking away, you know? And so that's why I stayed there so long because I'm not a quitter. I persevere when I persevere. When I overcome, great things happen. So I was looking to overcome. Every day I woke up alive, I was saying, you know, it's another day. It's another opportunity to, to make something great happen. And so that's what I was holding on to. I was holding on to that another day. And so, so going to Auburn was a great foundation for me in my whole life. You know, getting on that bus, not knowing if I would ever play basketball again. Mm -hmm. If I was the coach, I wouldn't play in my junior senior year. So I didn't know if I would, I would even play. But I had to go on faith. And three things that my dad taught me about sums up every individual is that your faith, your attitude, and your work ethic. You've got faith in something. You've got to have faith in something bigger than you, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Your faith, your attitude, and your work ethic. Three things that sum you up. So those are the things that became my foundation, okay, my atlas in life. And so those are the things that have built me and have been the threads that keep me focused and keep me moving in the right direction. The mighty Ruthie Bolton joining in us on details with Dustin. I'm Dustin Brakebill, joining us on KXVS Sports and KXVS Radio. Uh, and that's, that's a great list of athletes to go to Auburn. Also, uh, Charles Barkley, uh, Bo Jackson, uh, uh, Frank Thomas, a couple others, Cam Newton. But um, So you're coming to Stockton this weekend. Tell us about what's happening this weekend on Saturday, uh, Dress for Success, and uh, how did you get involved with them? Well, I'm excited. You know, I was at a uh, Keys camp. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, and I ran into uh, this amazing young lady, and that's part of Dress Success. And I, anyway, we were talking, and, and I was, um, I was, uh, you know, signing her son autographs, and she was telling me about him and and everything. And then she, and she asked me about what else other stuff that I do. I said, well, I, you know, I just love empowering youth. I love empowering women. And uh, she was like, wow, I would love for you to. You know, be able to uh, come to, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, the park to do some things in the future. I, said, I would love to. So she, she talked to my manager, and so, so yeah, I'm coming to. I'm, I'm doing a, a clinic in Alameda, I think Friday, and then Saturday night I'm coming to a gala, uh, a dress of success, and I'm, I'm excited. Anytime there is something that sets the atmosphere, put the, it put youth in it youth and women in a situation in, uh, in the atmosphere to be so I'm excited you know I, I love giving that I love using my platform to really impact life so I'm so thrilled to come there I've met several people from Stockton and I've done a lot of things there and I want the team to help build the community so I'm, I'm just real big on hands on mm -hmm. I don't wear I don't, I don't care about just using my name I want to be able to be there and touch and feel and give a hug and give a high five so I'm I'm beyond excited to be a part of this dress for success, and I'm just so proud of what they're doing, not just in Stockton, but all across the globe. They're mm -hmm. doing things all across the country, so I'm just thrilled to be a, uh, to be a part of their, of their movement. Yeah, and if people don't know, Stockton also has a great basketball lineage also in this area. St. Mary's basketball is the powerhouse around this region, and other great players have come from this great city of Stockton. Ruthie Bolton joining us on Details with Dustin. And uh, finally, Ruthie, before we let you go, and uh, we'll see you Saturday, um, I want to get you, I want to recap, I want to go back to the NBA Finals real quick. Uh, do you think LeBron James has the any luck going from 0-3 down to win it, uh, the series, or do the Warriors close out tomorrow night? Uh, man, you know, I, I, I actually thought this would be the game that the Cleveland will win. Mm -hmm. That's why when they can't, when they can't, because I said a team that know how to win, a team that um, athletes that are competitive, you don't want being embarrassed at home. So you're going to come out and play your butt off. So I thought maybe they would steal that one, you know, um, yesterday. But since they didn't, 
I'm not saying they're going to come out and give up, but I think that they know they have a huge beat in front of them. Mm-hmm. A huge beat. So my take is that the, the Warriors are right now so hungry, they don't want to take any chance. They don't want to feel what they felt last year. Mm-hmm. They don't want to even they, – they like they playing so hungry. So I think that the Warriors going to go and take it tomorrow. And uh, f- real quick, I want to get your uh, take on this. Sunday. When, when is the game Sunday? Uh, let me look this up. I don't know. They're always, every couple of days, I always forget. It's either Friday or Saturday or Sunday. It's the NBA's going crazy with the schedule, I think, in my opinion. Um, the next game is, where is the basketball schedule? I should know this at the top of my head. Um, the next game is on uh, tomorrow night in Cleveland. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, but for, real quick, I want to get your take on uh, these super teams. Do you think it's a, okay for basketball, or do you think it's bad for basketball? Uh, I, I didn't hear say the question again. Uh, do you think these super teams are good for basketball or bad for basketball? What do you mean by super? Oh, talking about like Cleveland? Cleveland and Golden State, all these players going in, uh, joining forces, basically. Well, you know, I, I think it's great basketball. You know what? I, mm-hmm. I love watching the Warriors play. I can really, I can sit through a whole NBA game now and watch the Warriors play. I love how they play. Mm-hmm. It's finally good to see a good team that's good, good guys. Yeah. I do a lot of stuff with the Warriors. I think they have a class act team. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Green that a little bit hot headed sometimes, but you know what? I love his fight. I love his sacrifice. I love his willingness to lay his life down for his team. Yeah, and you need you those. Know, he's a fighter. Yes. You need those kind of guys on the team. You do. You need yeah. somebody to say, you know what? We come out here to win, so you know what? Don't get it twisted. Don't. Don't take my kindness for a weakness. <laughs> and I think that uh, they, they do they do Curry. Curry's been given mm-hmm. a hard, you know, they because uh, he, you know, he really he speaks on his faith. And sometimes last season that he threw his mouth his mouthpiece or whatever. Mm-hmm. They, they try to like uh, throw him on the bus. It's like, you know what? There's no one perfect, but you know what? I'm still a fan. Great team, play well together, great coach. Mm-hmm. To me, I think it's great for basketball. Hats off to them. They playing with heart, they playing with drive. They play together. To me, they make they they they, they really they, they make they they, they uh, make the game. They uh, they respect the game and they make it fun to watch. Pass off to them. To me, I think it's great for sports. And uh, real quick, what do you think of the new Golden One Center in uh, uh, Sacramento? Oh, the Golden One Center, I think it's great. The concourse is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's wide. You know, they have better food selection. Uh, I think healthier food. Um, a lot of people have said some things about the city. When I go there, I ever hardly get a chance to sit. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out and about, yeah. I'm going around the suite. People say, I see you coming to suite 125, coming to suite HP, you know, with, you know, different organizations. So I'm roaming around, mm-hmm. so I never really got a chance to really sit down. But, but I think the new arena, I was just impressed that they were even able to pull it off, mm-hmm. to build the arena downtown, the parking, everything is going smoothly so far. So you know what? I think it's great. I think it's great for the city and great for the economy. So how can people uh, stay in touch with you and uh, follow you on, uh, on social media and uh, stay in contact with the Mighty Ruthie okay. Bolton? They can go to www.mightyruthiebolton.com or they can go to joinruthie.com. There's a place where you can send in information, joinruthie.com. Uh, and so they can, where I can get their email and I can stay in touch with them with all the things that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing webinars, uh, empowerment for women, for you. And I just want to keep people abreast on things that I'm doing because I'm about change. I'm about making a difference. I travel the world speaking. I go overseas. Just really, really thank. You. I love my fans, so I want to stay in touch with my fans. I'm not private. I'm not all, you know, like, oh, God, I, I, wanted, I want them to know about my schedule. I want them to know when I go overseas and I'm doing these amazing things. I want to share my life and my journey with my fans, so I need to be able to stay in touch with them. So, uh, com and also joinruthie.com is another way that they can, uh, I can stay in touch with them. And you can follow Ruthie on Twitter at RuthieBolton525 on Twitter. Thank you for joining us this uh, afternoon, Ruthie, on uh, Details with Dustin. And uh, i love to have you back on when you uh, br- uh, come out with the book. Awesome. awesome. Thank you for paying the power. It's going to be awesome. And also, lastly, they can pre-order some books uh, on my website. Mm-hmm. And also, we will have shirts from paying the power, some different little shirts and some motivation CDs. So, uh, so uh, they can uh, really, I, I know this, this uh, book is going to change people's lives. Uh, can't wait to meet you on Saturday, Ruthie. Thank you for joining us today. 
right, thank you. All right, thanks. Bye bye. That's the mighty Ruthie Bolton right here on Details with Dustin. Thank you for joining us on this special edition. And uh, for more details, we will give those to you in a few moments right here on Details with Dustin on KXVS Radio and KXVS Sports. Thank you for tuning in.